Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class. I hope guys you are aware about the mobile application. So I'm directly moving on to the question number one. So the question number one is, Center for Cellular and Molecular Platforms has launched the National Diagnostics Catapult. When was the platform launched for the first time? So guys, this is the 2.2 as you can clearly see in the brackets. And the question is, when was the 1.0 launched? So 1.0 was launched in July 2020. So guys, this is the year when COVID knocked on our doors. Okay, it was the first time when the first lockdown was imposed in India. And during this time, we were facing this burden of pandemic. And that is why this initiative was launched so that we can develop the diagnostic ecosystem in India. Okay, so this is the national diagnostics catapult. Now, how will the diagnostic ecosystem be developed? By giving a boost to the MSMEs by giving a boost to the diagnostic labs so that they can create more and more uh, RT-PCR kits in the case of the COVID-19 pandemic. And from now onwards, the focus is on developing the diagnostic capacity of these organizations, be it the MSMEs or the diagnostic labs, so that even if in the future we encounter any situation like COVID, so we will be able to detect the problem in the very first place and create the vaccine for that in a very quick manner. So that is why this diagnostic ecosystem is being developed. Okay, now let's see the details of it. So this Center for Cellular and Molecular Platforms. This is first of all, let me tell you that uh, this organization is a government organization and it has department of biotechnology department of science and technology niti ayog's aim that is that an innovation mission is an active partner in this organization and the ministry of electronics and information technology startup india and the government of karnataka okay so this is the only state government partnering in this initiative so do remember that this c camp has Karnataka government as one of its stakeholders, okay? That can be a question. Now moving to the news. So in the 2.2 version, first of all, this C camp initiative, that is this national diagnostic catapult is funded by the Bangalore Life Sciences Cluster, the Rockefeller Foundation, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and fine. This Rockefeller Foundation is a US-based private organization, okay? Bill and Melinda Gates is also a US-based organization and this find is a global diagnostic alliance, okay? Which has many countries and they primarily work for developing the diagnostic ecosystem. So these are the organizations which are anchoring or rather which are funding this initiative, the National Diagnostic Catapult. And the purpose of this Catapult I have already clarified. That is to boost India's preparedness for the current and future pandemics and scale up the diagnostic space for infectious diseases, including but not limited to COVID-19. Now let's see the performance of this initiative in its first phase, okay? So in its first phase, it developed 1 million indigenous RT-PCR test kits, okay? for the COVID-19 and that was per day. So per day we were able to produce 10 lakh of RT-PCR RT kits in it. 200 indigenous MSMEs and academic labs were uh, onboarded on this initiative and this became the largest cohort, the largest grouping or you can say the largest collaboration among the academics, uh, among the labs and the MSMEs, okay? Now, the last but not the least, so the CAMP Index 2.0 builds on the hugely successful first edition of this initiative, okay, which was launched in July 2020. So guys, this was the picture of the launch of the 2.0 initiative. So do remember that National Diagnostic Catapult is nothing but a platform to bring the existing diagnostic MSMEs and the labs on board and provide them the mentorship so that they can develop more and more 
kits and more and more diagnostic capabilities okay <clears throat> Question number two is the Department of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare has partnered with the Development Innovation Lab to explore the opportunities to harness innovation to improve food security, address climate change and allow farmers to increase their incomes. The D Development Innovation Lab was founded by Nobel Laureate Dr. Michael Kremer, University Professor in Economics Act. Okay. So, directly a question on the founder of an organization which is collaborating with India has been asked. So, here guys you can judge the level of examination because on the same level the questions are asked in RBI examination. So, I would like, I would take one second here to just tell you two things. First thing is that guys you can expect the RBI notification anytime soon. So, prepare yourself, tie up your seat belts and prepare hard. Okay. Second thing is that you are going to encounter such questions in your phase one of RBI grade B and you have 80 questions in your phase one. Okay, so don't just uh, cover the current affairs from the outside view. You just need to dig deeper into the current affairs and understand the entire thing in a holistic manner. Otherwise, you won't be able to answer such type of questions because here, what has been asked? The question has been asked from the person who has founded the group, the Development Innovation Lab. Okay, one more thing, read as much as you can because you are going to get these lengthy questions in your examination and the time, minute, time period would be only 25 minutes. Okay, 25 is way too less to counter 80 questions. So buckle up your speed of reading so that you can answer such type of questions. Okay. Now coming back to the uh, news. So here University of Chicago is the right answer. And one more thing, uh, why this person or this university has become important here? The reason is that this development innovation lab is located in the university itself. Okay, that is why this question has been framed. Now it's a very, uh, I would say simple news. Okay, so uh, Department of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare has partnered with the Development Innovation Lab at the University of Chicago and the purpose is to explore different kinds of technologies and different areas of collaboration, especially in the field of agriculture. Okay, So here you can see they will harness innovation to ensure food security, climate change, address climate change and allow the farmers to increase their incomes. Okay, I hope uh, you know that Ashok Dalavai committee of 2018 was set up to recommend ways to double the income of farmers by the year 2022. However, we haven't reached this stage of doubling the farmer's income. Right now, the farmer's income has not been doubled, but yes, definitely it has been increased and the government and various other stakeholders are taking active role in order to increase the income of the farmers okay the last point here is that this lab was founded by the nobel laureate dr michael kremer who in 2019 also won the nobel prize in economics okay so do remember this point as well because he is a nobel laureate okay so you can expect a question from him okay so he is michael kremer now guys just a little bit of information on the nobles and then I will move on to the third question. So I hope you know that Nobel is given in six fields. First is physics, chemistry, uh, medicine or physiology. Then we have literature, we have economics and we have peace. Agar aap logo ko ye chhe awards yaad rahe jate hai, it's well and good. In case if you find it difficult to remember these six categories of Nobel awards, then you can divide it into a group of two, two. Okay, so this is your PCB, the subject that you take in your 11th also physics, chemistry, biology. So this is physics, chemistry, biology, then literature, economics and peace. Okay, now one more thing that I wanted to tell you here that peace is the only prize which is given from Oslo, uh, Norway the capital of Norway, whereas the other prices are given 
at Stockholm. And this is a very basic information. I hope all of you remember this information. It's very basic for, a, as, for an aspirant of banking exams. One more thing that only the economics prize is the youngest of all these. Okay, it was the prize which was introduced in 1969. Other prizes were given since 1901, but this was the youngest and the latest prize. So this makes it odd one out. But remember, this is not the prize given from Oslo, it's peace. Okay, so these are the two anomalies in the nobles which may confuse you. Okay. Or it's not basic up pata yoga that Alfred Nobel Nobel was the person after whom this award has been set up. Okay, so question number three. Recently, Union Home Minister Amit Shah will lay the foundation stone uh, for India's fifth nano urea plant. Where will the plant be set up? So Vyoghar in Jharkhand is the right answer. Okay. Okay, so you must have heard about the nano urea and urea. Now I am going to tell you the difference between these two things. First of all, know this fact that why urea is important for us. Urea is a very important fertilizer which is used by farmers rampantly. Okay, and 30 to 35 percent of our urea needs are imported in India, which makes the urea very expensive for the government because government provides to get a subsidy on the urea for the farmers. But for the government, it is very expensive, especially with the Russia Ukraine scenario, it has become more and more expensive uh, for the Indian government. Okay, so that is the thing. Now we have understood the importance of urea. Now, what is urea and what is nano urea? So here you can clearly see that it is a powder kind of a product. So obviously that's the one distinction, it is powderish and it is liquid, okay. The other distinction is cost. It is expensive because this urea is imported. Although I would not say that we import the entire urea because I have just written here 30 to 35 percent of our need is imported. So from where are we fulfilling the rest of the need? From our own production capacity, right? So production to hai urea ki but it is not up to the demand level. That is why we have to import urea a lot. Okay, so the cost is higher in this case, but this urea. Now we will be proud on this thing that we are the first who have developed the first nano urea for the farmers. And remember, it is in the liquid form. Okay, so it can be spread uh, through the leaves also, it can be absorbed by the leaves also. This urea needs to be absorbed by the roots, but this can be absorbed by the leaves. So through drones, we can spread this urea as well, this nano urea and it has the capacity to cover acres of land in small quantity whereas this would be needed in huge quantities in comparison to this urea, okay. I hope this much is clear. Now what is the meaning of nano urea because on what basis are we comparing these two ureas? This is in solid form and this is in liquid form. Then on what basis are we saying that this is a nano urea and this is not a nano urea? The basis is the size of the particles, okay. Suppose from this we take this one droplet of urea. So in this one droplet, the size of the particles within this droplet would be between 20 to 50 mm millimeters, okay. Whereas in this powder, in one prill, as you can see this one prill, so in this one prill of urea, the size of the particles would be larger than the 20 to 50 mm. That is why this is called the nano urea and this is not the nano urea, this is the conventional urea. Now what is the benefit of nano urea? What is the benefit of such a smaller size of urea? The benefit is that it, is, it gets absorbed easily by the plants, okay. Not only by the plants roots but also through the leaves and other parts of the plant. Thus it becomes more and more effective for the plants okay and here you can clearly see the benefits it reduces the input cost for the farmers although subsidy milti hai is urea pe, but still in case uh, in comparison to this urea this would be very cheap for the farmers first of all we are producing it in our land only okay so import cost nahi hogi. secondly it will be environment friendly it improves the nutritional value also because 
it has high nutritional value for the soil and the crops in comparison to the conventional urea. Then it increases the farmer's income. Obviously, if the input cost is low, low and the output is higher, then farmer's income will be doubled. It enhances crop productivity because the nitrogen availability in each drop of urea, nano urea, would be higher in comparison to this conventional urea. It is cheaper than this. Okay. I hope you have understood the basic distinction between this urea and nano urea because it is very often and it is very obvious that all of you should be aware about it. Okay? Don't think like that urea is a subject of agriculture and why are we studying about it as, agri uh, as the RBI or SEBI students. Okay? Don't think like that because this is the class of general awareness and current affairs. So your general awareness will be broadened through the medium of current affairs. Okay? And this is a part of your general awareness. Now, the foundation stone for the fifth nano urea plant has been laid at the Jharkhand's Diogar, okay? which is a place in Jharkhand and it will be built at a cost of 450 crores. Now guys understand this point that for the nano urea, we have five plants. For the conventional urea also, we have the five plants. Okay. And all these plants are going to increase the urea production in India, which will help us in eliminating the urea export, sorry, imports by 2025, which is a target. Eliminating urea import by 2025. Do remember this point, guys. This is very, very important. Now, in 2022 only, in Kalol, which is a place in Gujarat, the first nano urea production facility was opened by prime minister narendra modi okay this is the world's first nano urea plant which was set up in gujarat then the second plant is in uh onla which is in bareilly fulpur the third plant in prayagraj then we have a uh, uh, bangalore plant which is the fourth plant okay and this deogarh's plant is the fifth nano urea production plant okay so these are the five plants do remember these five urea produ producing plants then at present we have 260 lakh tons of conventional urea production and 90 lakh tons are imported okay to meet the local demand by 2025 the target is to have 60 tons of production capacity 60 lakh tons of production capacity uh, added into this existing facility, existing capacity so that we can eliminate the import of urea. Okay. And the nano urea production would be increased to 44 crore bottles of 50, sorry, of 500 ml each per annum, which is equivalent to 200 lakh tons of conventional urea. Guys, all these are numbers. Okay. Uh, if you are understanding the logic behind these numbers then it is well and good and in case you are not able to understand the logic the logic is basically this much is the current conventional capacity of the urea and this much is imported now the purpose is to add 60 lakh into this capacity so that we are not able we don't need to import any urea in the future these this is the logic behind these numbers and uh, I would recommend all of you to write down these numbers on a sheet of paper which would be your fact sheet sheet so that you remember the targets related to urea and other targets which have been given by the government of India. The next thing is that at present the nano urea is 5 crore bottles per year and the production capacity the target is to increase it to 44 crore bottles and at present we have 5 crore bottles per year. The target is to eliminate import by 2025. Then the top five plants, the urea producing, conventional urea producing plants are at Ramagundam, Gorakhpur, Sindri, Baroni and Talchar. This Talchar plant was inaugurated. The foundation stone of it was laid in January only. That is why uh, you would be reminding of these facts because in last month also we discussed these facts related to urea. And now we are just keeping it as a revision. I hope it is acting as a revision for all of you. Um, okay, so I have already told you that the top five urea producing plants are these and the nano urea producing plants are uh, there. 
okay and uh, urea accounts for almost 70 percent of India's overall fertilizer subsidy. You would be amazed to know that the government spends to be 70,000 crores on urea subsidy only and this is a very huge amount and if nano urea becomes a part of the um, daily agricultural practice then it would reduce this burden of the government. Now this is about the nano urea, the uses of nano urea which you can read on your own as well. I have already uh, explained to the, you the basics of the nano urea and guys one thing that the unit is nm okay not millimeter it's not millimeter it's nm okay question number four is which of the following companies has launched the hangam a web-based portal along with a drone and ground control system for introducing drone technology in coal mines so here guys mahanadi coal limited is the right so first of all know this fact that it is a subsidiary of coal india limited Coal India Limited is, I would say, the largest and the only coal extracting company. Not the only, but definitely the largest coal extracting company in India. And it has eight subsidiaries. And all of these are the subsidiaries of Coal India Limited only. And out of these, Mahanadi Coal Fields has launched this Vihangam project. Okay, now before moving ahead, I have a question for all of you and my question is you need to tell me the production target of the Coal India Limited for 2023 to 2024. Okay, this is your question. Chalye. So what has happened? The thing is that the Hangam is a portal which has been launched by the uh, Mahanadi Coalfield Limited and the basic idea of this web portal is to keep a track of the drone technology which will be used in the open cast mines okay so through the drones they will be able to monitor the functions at the mines and through the monitoring they will be able to prevent the disasters also so that's the basic idea of this the uh, hangam portal to monitor the activities of drone and this drone and ground control system which is a part of this portal only okay both of them are going to work in uh, work hand in hand okay now right now this technology has been launched at Bhubaneshwari and Lingarat which is both of these places are in Odisha okay the next thing is that Mahanadi Coalfield Limited only contributes more than 20% of the total coal production in India which is very significant okay and Shri Om Prakash Singh is the CMD of the Mahanadi Coalfield the last question is Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs has uh, an engineer and Limited have signed an MOU to develop waste to energy and biomethanation projects in cities with a population of million plus. The initiative will result in an additional processing capacity of dash TPD for bio methanation and dash TPD for waste to energy respectively. TPD means transport. Okay, that's the short form of transport. Now, what is the capacity? So, the target is to increase the phase to energy capacity, sorry, biomethanation capacity to 15,000 and 10,000 waste to energy capacity. Now, what is waste to energy? Using the waste to create energy. Okay, so here you can see the waste is being used in the plant and then it is being processed and then we are getting fuel, gas and electricity. So, from waste, we have generated products. This is waste to wealth. This is biomethanation. Now, biomethanation ke baare mein do, do ten cheeze hain jo aapko pata honi bhaab zaruri hai. First of all, through the methanation process, we extract methane and carbon. Thik hai? And methane is used as a fuel. Isko fuel ki tarah bhi use ke jata hai for the purpose of heating, for the purpose of vehicles uh, or for the purpose of electricity generation. Okay? So these are some of the uses, fertilizer banane ke liye, plastics ke liye, uh, plastic create karne ke liye, aur bhi bhaat sare iske applications hai. So for those purposes, methane is extracted. Now from where it is extracted? Naturally, methane is extracted from the organic waste. Okay? From the human animal waste, from the organic waste like vegetable, peels and all the, those uh, organic waste when it is decomposed the methane gas is extracted okay so 
through the biomethanation uh, plant what is done the waste is collected and from that waste remember we are talking about the organic waste because organic waste is methane nikal sakta so from that waste methane is produced and then we use the methane for different purposes i just mentioned and this is the flow chart which is there to explain to you the purposes of the sorry the process of methane extraction okay through the biomethanation methanation is the process of creation of methane and bio means that we are creating the methane through the bio means through organic means okay now what has happened so uh, here guys biomethanation has been explained to you i have just explained the things which are written here so you can read it out on your own there is nothing much difficult written here i have just explained it recently ministry of housing and urban affairs uh, and the engineers uh, india limited both of them have collaborated and now they are going to develop the technologies for creating the waste to wealth sorry waste to energy plants theek hai and the biomethanation power plants because we have a problem of increasing waste in india and that waste is not being put to any use and we are not able to decompose the waste as well so why not put that waste to create wealth okay so that's the basic idea now this will enable the green growth of india now guys if you have seen the budget video by manish sir then you would be able to connect the dot here where has this green growth been taken from okay if you haven't seen that budget session yet after this video go to the channel and watch the budget and economic survey video both of them are very important for your exam and uh, i will definitely tell you about this green growth connector uh where is it connecting okay to the budget now million plus cities will be targeted through this uh initiative so there are 59 million plus cities million plus city meaning the cities which have more than 10 lakh people as its population okay the target is to increase the processing capacity of the biomethanation okay to 15000 tons per day and the waste to energy to 10000 per tons per day okay the next statement is actually this is the new initiative again this initiative has also been launched under the green growth target okay that is why i have mentioned this here otherwise this program was announced in the budget itself although not this program but this entire vision of the government was also announced in the budget that we are going to set up the waste to energy plants and biomethanation projects we are going to increase the capacity however right now with this partnership the vision was actualizing okay it is coming into reality so this pm pranam program for restoration awareness nourishment and amelioration of mother earth that's the basic idea of this pm pranam this is the full form. the idea is to promote the alternatives to fertilizers okay so uh, under the pm pm pranam scheme we are going to develop other alternatives so that we can reduce the dependence on the fertilizers and at present what alternatives do we have we have the organic farming we have the zero budget natural farming we have the gm crop because gm crops are also made uh, pest resilient drought resilient and they are also they can also be made more nitrogenous so that their need for fertilizer can be reduced so these are the alternatives that we have at present in the market in indian market specifically now my question from all of you is tell me who is the founder of zero budget natural farming he is the person from maharashtra this is the hint now you have to tell me the name now this pm pranam has been launched under the gobar scheme and gobar is galvanizing organic bio agro resources dhan scheme okay gobar dhan okay that's the basic idea now 500 new waste to wealth plants okay so this is the statement given in the budget and in order to actualize this statement the partnership has been happened with the uh, engineers india limited so 500 new waste to wealth plants will be set up under the gobardhan scheme and of these 200 will be compressed biogas plants and out of these 275 will be set up in the urban areas 
and 300 plants will be cluster based plants okay and all these things will happen under the Govardhan scheme in the current year only this is a very very important statement current year as in the coming year coming uh, from April 1st onwards so a total of 10,000 crores will be spent on creating 500 ways to energy plants and these announcements were made in the union budget. Now I was talking about these seven uh, priorities out of which green growth is one of the priorities. So these seven priorities are called as Saptarishis. Okay, Saptarishi is also a constellation in the sky and from there the name has been taken Saptarishi. So these are the seven focus areas in this year's budget and definitely a question can be created on it. Last year I guess uh, I remember that there was a question on one of the pillars of the union budget in your ESI paper of RBI phase 2. Okay, so don't take a chance and miss this thing. Seven priorities have been highlighted. Inclusive growth, reaching the last mile, youth power, financial sector, green growth, unleashing the potential, infrastructure and investment. These are the seven areas on which the focus will be laid on the Amrit card. Okay. So that was all for today. I hope you have enjoyed the video. So here I'm ending this session. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. In case you have any kind of feedback, you are free to provide it in the comments or on the WhatsApp number of hours. So on that note, I would like to bid adieu to all of you. Thank you so much for watching the video.